Hi everyone. Today I wanted to take some time to go over some of my recent favorite products. I hesitate to use the word holy grail because that kind of implies that I absolutely like could not live without it or like have to have it in my routine every single time to make my makeup look its best and that's just not really true of any product for me. If we're being real, we can always live without any makeup. We don't need it to live, but of course it makes you feel good and feel more confident and that's what I love about makeup and why I choose to wear it almost every day. I just wanted to go through some of the products that I've been using recently that are definitely some of my favorites. Some of them have been constant favorites throughout the years. Some are kind of new favorites and I just kind of wanted to go over them and share my thoughts on some of them. So if you want to see what some of my current favorites are, then just keep watching. So my first favorite product is one that I have mentioned a number of times in previous videos, and it's an important step in your makeup routine that you don't want to forget, and that's your skincare. And my favorite skincare product that I have been using literally for years is the Neutrogena Hydra Boost jar. I've used, this is the gel cream, I've used the, like, just the gel, I've used, there's a squeezy tube version too that's like a moisturizer, I've used the, the hyaluronic acid serum. I just love anything from this Hydra Boost line and I always repurchase it and it's pretty much always in my rotation. I love it so much that I have two backups of this in my skincare section of my drawers and I just I put this on every single morning and every other night I have a more intense moisturizer that I sometimes use at night. But I use this every single day and it's one of my absolute favorites. I do think that there is a version of this now that has SPF in it as well. So that's definitely something the next time after I use up this in my backups, I'm going to start purchasing the one that has the SPF in it, especially in the summertime. I mean, I try to wear an SPF every single day regardless. But especially in the summertime, that's usually when I have more days than not that I'm not going to wear any makeup. And so it's good to just already have that SPF built into your skincare. So yeah, that is the first favorite product of mine and I highly recommend it. Let's see, to keep some semblance of an order, I'll kind of go in order of like face. So I'll do like some base products and then eyes and go from there. So for foundation, I have two favorites. One's a high end and one is a drugstore version, although I do feel like drugstore prices are getting closer and closer to high-end prices for some things. But my first favorite is the Urban Decay Hydromaniac. I have had this since, I think I got this last summer. I have the shade 30 light, and it's a really good shade match for me pretty much most of the year. It's a little light for me right now, but I actually have been kind of mixing this recently because the foundation I've been using is getting a little dark. If you want to see which one I'm currently using on most days, then you can check out my Project Pan playlist, which I will have linked below. But I don't use everything in my Project Pan every single time that I do my makeup. I give myself a couple days a month to kind of take a break from those or use something else because I don't want everything else to get neglected in my collection. So on the days when I'm not exclusively wearing the foundation that I'm currently panning, I either pull for the Urban Decay Hydromaniac favorite or the L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Acid Serum. This has definitely been a favorite of mine this summer. It's like a nice lightweight coverage. I love that it has the hyaluronic acid in it and it does actually come with a dropper and I bought a pump on Amazon. I can try to link that below and just kind of did it that way because the dropper was just like not usable honestly so I switched it out this can be a little pricey I did get this I think it was on sale one time at Ulta and I had a coupon or there was something with L'Oreal like buy one get one 50% off so definitely keep that in mind when looking at things at Ulta and let's see if I can figure out the shade that I have the shade on this is kind of on this line is kind of weird the shade on this is 1 to 2.5 rosy light I don't know why there's like a 1 to 2.5. Why is it not just 2.5? I don't know. But that's the shade I have in this. And I wanted to say too, I believe the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale is coming up. And I think the Hydromaniac is on sale on one of the days. I can't remember which one. I'll insert it here. 
after I look it up when I'm editing this video. But I definitely think I'm going to pick up another one of these during the sale because mine is almost gone. And I just really like the look of this all year round. It's hydrating. It's not too glowy and it's not like overly matte. So I just think it's like a good, it's the look that I usually go for on a day-to-day -day basis. So those are my two foundation favorites of the summer. For concealer, I have a new favorite. I just picked this up at the beginning of the summer and I've been using it pretty much nonstop and I love it. And it is the Maybelline Superstay Active Wear Concealer. I I just love it so much. I like the, the doe foot applicator. It's like a thin, mine's kind of bent. It's like a thinner one, but I feel like it really picks up. Like, look at that. It picks up a decent amount of product when I'm using it. The color match on this is really good for me right now. I have the shade, I have the shade 22. It's a good match for me right now. And I feel like, I don't, I don't know if it's because it's like the active wear, you know, properties of this or whatever, but I do feel like it doesn't, it doesn't slide around my face. It doesn't transfer. It stays in place all day. And I mean, right now we're going through like a crazy heat wave or something. And so like there is some sweating during the day if I go outside even for a couple minutes. And this just really stays in place. No creasing. I don't use it under my eyes. I use a different under eye concealer, but this just stays in place all day. It always looks good. And I just feel like it has a good amount of coverage. It covers my blemishes really well. Uh, without looking too cakey. So yeah, I really, really like this. I like this so much that I already bought a backup and I am excited to keep using this. Also love that it's a drugstore option. So another face product that is an absolute favorite of mine and has been for a while now is the Makeup Revolution Cream Bronzer. I know I recently spoke about this in my Shop My Stash video, so I will also link that below if you want to check it out and see all the products that I pull from for my collection to use for the next like month and a half. But as I said in that video, this product, it's just, it's a nice creamy emollient formula. It blends out really well. It plays well with other products. It doesn't slide around or wipe away your foundation if you put this on at the top of foundation. If you put it under foundation, it blends in nicely with that as well. It's just, it's a good color. It's not too orange. It's not too gray. It's that perfect bronzy shade that you can use to bronze or contour with. I just really, really enjoy this. And this is like $8 at Ulta. So it's definitely a steal and definitely worth checking out. So I don't have a favorite necessarily in every single category for face. So, you know, I skipped primer. I don't really have a favorite blush right now. I don't have a favorite powder. That I own, I will say my favorite powder that I have used honestly in the past year, if not longer, for a very long time, was that Kosas Cloud Set powder. I'll insert a picture here. I did um, pan that earlier this year, so again, check out my Project Pan playlist below to see how that went. And I've used a couple powders since finishing that one up, and just nothing compared, nothing at all. So I am very much looking forward to purchasing that again. Very soon, I, I think I said when I finished it, I, I wanted to purchase it again, but it was about to be summer and I do get more tan in the summer. So I'm gonna wait until we're further into fall and I've kind of lost some of that tan to get a color that matches me better for the majority of the year. So I'm really looking forward to that and I just haven't found anything that gives me the same look or feel of that powder. It was just truly so light, but blurring at the same time. And I feel like none of my other powders are doing that for me and I don't I don't dislike my other powders but it's just that one just did so much more that I think it was worth the price and I will be purchasing that again this fall next I'll talk about some eyeshadow so for today's look I did use the elf quad in pumpkin pie um, the day that we are filming this is the first day that Starbucks released its pumpkin spice drinks for the fall so I just felt like it was kind of a good time to put on a more fall look and it's just a nice bronzy look and I love that I was able to create this from a four dollar eyeshadow palette it's just I, I like the colors they blended really well the shimmers I feel like you know are pretty shimmery there's very little creasing and I just think that these little elf quads I own three I have the pumpkin pie rose water and cream and sugar. I just think these are, these are definitely favorites of mine and I also just think they are such a good value for what they are. These, like I said, are, I believe they're still $4, maybe $5, I'll have to double check. 
and there's so many color options and I just think that they perform better than you would expect for a four dollar eyeshadow set. Are they the absolute best eyeshadows on the planet? No, probably not. But if you're just starting out with makeup or you don't want to spend a lot of money on makeup but you want variety, this is definitely a way to go and I highly recommend them. And I'm looking forward to maybe picking up one or two new palettes of these um, in the fall. On the more high-end side of the eyeshadow palette, my favorites have been the Natasha Denona Mini palettes. I have four of them. I have the Mini Nude. This is definitely one of my most used. I have a Mini Sunset. I haven't used this one a ton, but I think this actually will be better for the fall because of the colors. I have Mini Love, which of course is great for Valentine's, or this would have been great, you know, to wear for like the Barbie movie this summer or something. And then my absolute favorite and most used one is the Mini Viva. It's so well loved and used that the top has totally come off and you can just see I've really made, I mean that middle shade, I've made a huge dent in that. I've really used these blending shades a lot and my cream to powder one definitely has like a dent going in it as well. So these are definitely some of my favorites. I want to pick up, I think there's like the mini Glam maybe and the mini Zendo. Those are two that I have my eye on. And then I don't own any of her big palettes, but the new one that came out is really tempting, but they're very expensive for what it is, I think. So definitely going to hold off on that. Luckily, there's a ton of videos and reviews going up about that palette. So I will have a lot of reviews and research to look at before I decide if I really want to spend my money on that. But yeah, if you don't want to spend the money on the Natasha Denona minis, because these do get into like the $28 to $30 range, which is quite a lot for a five pan look, and I definitely recommend checking out the e.l.f. wide size quads instead as just a more affordable option that will also give you a lot of color variety. So staying with the eyes, next I'm going to talk about an eyeliner and it is this brown fly liner liquid pen from Fenty Beauty. I freaking love this. I had the black one as well. The black one is also amazing. I used it up but I will be repurchasing that and this one when I run out of this. I'm just working through another black felt tip liner right now, but these truly are just so pigmented. This brown one is truly just, it's a true brown and I just feel like I have never been able to find something that's a true brown in a liquid liner before. It's either way too light or it's like too gold or it's basically black. So I just love that this is a true brown and I wear this most days. Today I'm wearing a black because I felt like that went better with the more like orangey coppery colors but just on a regular day when I'm wearing a more neutral look or even a more like pink neutral look the brown liner I feel like just looks a little better with a lot of those eye looks especially if you don't want something that's as harsh as like a black line. The brown one, it's very forgiving, it's easy to use, and it just kind of enhances those colors, but in a less intense way, if that makes sense. So this this is definitely one of my favorites, worth the price point. I highly recommend this and the black one as well, and I will definitely be repurchasing these in the future. For mascara, I've been using pretty much the same mascara for a couple months now because I try to only have one or two open at a time so that they don't feel bad. And it's the one I'm wearing today. It's the Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity Mascara. I know this has been around for a while and people like it, but I just feel like, I mean, it makes my lashes so black. It keeps them volumized and lifted. It separates them. There's no clumping. And I love that it also washes off pretty easily at the end of the day. I usually use a milk, uh, makeup like cleansing balm and it just comes off so easily. And yeah, there's no flaking no smudging, it stays in place all day and keeps my lashes lifted. And I just really, really have been enjoying this and it's one of my favorite mascaras that I've used in a while. Now for lips, I usually in the summer keep it pretty simple with my lip combo. Most days, you know, I'm just kind of keeping it neutral or like a light pink wash of color, my lips fit better. 
So I've been really enjoying my NYX lip liners this summer. I have three colors. This is a darker one, so that's definitely a more fall looking one. This is the color Auburn. The two that I've been using the most this summer are Peekaboo Neutral and Ever. They look very similar, but Peekaboo Neutral is definitely a little more pink. So I don't know if neutral is quite the right word, but it's definitely a little more pink. And Ever is a little bit of like a darker pink. So today I am wearing Peekaboo Neutral, kind of, I just line my lips and I usually fill in the corners a little bit. And then in the center is where I put my lip color for the day. But I just really like the formula of these. They are sharpened wooden pencils. Some people don't like that, but I actually find that I don't really prefer overly creamy lip liners because I find that those then will like slide around your lips. I feel like kind of the slightly, I don't want it like super dry and stiff, but the slightly stiffer, less creamy lip liners that come in a pencil form, I think just kind of stay in place a little better and kind of deposit a little better color throughout the day, if that makes sense. So I've been really enjoying these. These are, again, super affordable, like $5 at Ulta. I definitely want to pick up some more colors as we move into the fall season and kind of expand my collection of these. And then for lip color beyond lip pencils, I've really been gravitating towards these two products this summer and they both were ones that I purchased this year, I think like in the spring and summer. So the first one I'm wearing today, it's the Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink. And I have this in the shade Cheeky. And I just think this is a really pretty like pink neutral color. It's kind of almost a My Lips But Better color just with a little bit more of a pink sheen to it so you can see how sheer it actually is and how shiny and glossy so it's definitely not like a liquid lipstick it does dry down a little bit like you can see on my lips now it's not like as shiny but when you first put it on it is and you can still like you know move it around your lips a little bit that doesn't dry out and like you know get patchy and cakey or anything like those liquid lipsticks did back in the day when those were super popular so I've really been enjoying this and even when it dries down, which it has now, I can still like move it around my lips and it's comfortable, especially having a more like neutral shade like this because of it being a little more on the sheer side. It's easy to apply if you don't have a mirror, you just kind of want to, you can almost treat it like a gloss in a way. It just has maybe a little bit more staying power than a gloss. And the second lip product I have used a lot this summer is my e.l.f. lipstick in Dirty Talk. Elf released these earlier this year, I think, maybe last year. And I know some people think that this is kind of on the more like pricey side. I think these come in at about $9. And I feel like that's pretty on par with other drugstore lipstick prices, but I know Elf has always been known for their cheaper prices. So this for Elf was a little expensive, but I think it's worth it because I really, really like the formula. It's so creamy. It's just like a nice wash of color. It stays on for a decent amount of time. And I also just love the packaging. I think the packaging feels so nice. It's got this like matte outer packaging and then the lid is magnetized. So, you know, it's not gonna fall off in your purse. If it gets put on incorrectly, it's always gonna correct itself. I just think that that makes it a little bit more worth the price. At least we're getting decent packaging with the product. And yeah, I just think that this color especially is just, again, like that uh, vinyl ink, it's that pink neutral color. So they're pretty similar. And there have been days where I've worn these together, this on the bottom and this on top in the center. And they just create a really nice lip combo, especially with these NYX liners. And it's just been really nice to have that as kind of a go-to lip combo for the summer. So that is all of my favorites that I wanted to share with you all today. I hope that was enjoyable and helpful just to see what I've been liking this summer. A lot of these products have been performing really well in the heat and the humidity for me. So I think that's also a major plus. Definitely looking forward to moving into fall though and taking some of these products with me. Again, check out the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale that's coming up in September, I believe. and see if some of the products that I've mentioned or other things that are your favorites might be going on sale. Like I said, I know that Urban Decay Hydromaniac is going to be a part of it, as well as some skincare items that I'm interested in trying out. That's something that I think I'm going to be doing um, coming up is kind of revamping my skincare routine. Like I said, I do absolutely love this Neutrogena Hydro Boost line, and I'm definitely going to keep this in rotation, but I feel like I need to kind of revamp some other parts of my 
routine. So let me know if that's something that you would like to see a video on once I figure that out, or if you have any recommendations of skincare items that you think would be really good for moving into the fall season. But yeah, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I would love to know what some of your favorites are as well. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos and get notified for next week's and I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.